Hello everybody, here is a short screenshot about market quotes and how to manage groups of them. Let's say, well, we have some kind of bond or bonds depending on a bond curve. Well, I'll use the same, uh, well, I'll start by initializing the thing. As I was saying, for illustration purposes, I'm going to be using the same data set that we used in, in one of the examples in the quantitative library. Basically, we have a number of quoted bonds so in this data, the first for each pair, the first number is the, is the length of the bond in years. This one is the coupon. For simplicity, we're going to have this bond starting now. And for each of them, I'm going to instantiate the corresponding helper. Well, I won't dwell on this. It's just I'm just setting up this curve, which is fitted on. A, with the Nelson by the Nelson Siegel method on the the bonds above. For each of these uh, bonds, each of these uh, market quotes, I have a corresponding simple quote here, and uh, I'm going to modify these objects when uh, the market the market prices change. So at this point, the curve is set up, and I can plot it. And this is the the plot of discount factor versus time. Well, discount factor is uh, from 1 to 0, time is in years. And uh, here I'm going to set up uh, a bond which is priced on that curve. So I'm going to, to use a simple fixed rate bond, 4% uh, coupon, and uh, here is the schedule. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter what this, the, the schedule is. The point is, I'm going to price the bond by just discounting the coupons on the on the curve. So, and this one is the MPV that we are going to get. Oh, also, I didn't mention it before. I think, but for each of the bonds, I assumed a market price of 100, just for for simplicity. Okay. Back here, well, and this is a you might recognize this as a, a quote from the Magnificent Seven, the old one, not the new one, as far as I know. And uh, uh, this, I think, the, you you can see from that where where I'm going to go. Well, anyway, you might have the idea, and might look like a, a good idea to have uh, uh, something, some kind of observer observing the bond and uh, doing something when uh, the bond uh, notifies of a change. For instance, in this case, I'm going to use as uh, as observer this simple function. Well, I'm going to instantiate an observer that triggers this simple function that calculates the MPV of the bond, appends it to some kind of historical series and also prints it. So I'm going to define this function, create an observer that triggers this function when uh, receives a notification and uh, I'm going to register the observer with the bond. This means that uh, if I set a new value of any of the quotes, the, 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 in this case quotes with index 2, this function is going to be called. So let's try it and here we go. And uh, we get it actually called twice uh, well this was a surprise for me too when uh, i was preparing this uh, this notebook uh, well it doesn't really matter for for what i'm going to, to say in the in the remainder of the of the screencast and uh, the point here anyway is that uh, somehow i'll have to go back to the library and check it and, and and fix it but somehow the bond gets notified twice when the quote changes once uh, it gets notified by the quote or the helper directly without going through the curve and uh, which means that when we ask the bond for its MPV the curve is not yet notified of the change and hasn't changed yet and in fact we get the, the, the same price as before and then the helper notifies the curve, so we, the curve which in turn notifies again the bond and this time when we calculate the bond, the curve is also going to recalculate and we're going to get a different price. Well, anyway, uh, 
this is just a, a glitch in the in the in, in the library, but doesn't really uh, affect what I'm going to say next. But because well, just the same when we change quote, uh, this fires twice. But the point is, the price of the bond changes, and it is recalculated as soon as we and printed as soon as we set the new value. So I'm going to get back to the original value for the quote. Now, often the case is, well, this happens for, for uh, this, this quoted bonds. This also happens if we have a curve bootstrap done on deposits, on swap rates, on, on whatever. It is often the case that you don't get a single chain a single quote change that you may have uh, uh, a change in a whole set of them coming in so let's see what happens if we just nearly set let's say the new price for all the bonds is 101 and we set it to all the, the new price to, to, to all the quotes by just looping through, through them and here we go Okay, you might have expected this, as we go through the loop, for each quote change, the bond gets notified and the observer causes it to recalculate. Recalculation is not something that the bond does on, on, on its own, the point is, we explicitly say that when this observer receives a notification, it's going to call this function this function is going to ask the bond for its mpv and that triggers the recalculation okay we collected the prices as we as we are doing this and we can plot them so what happened is that uh, well this was really a, a a whole set of changes so all the prices went up to 101 so what really happened was that the price of the bond started here with all the prices at 100 and the new price is this one but by looping through the quotes what happens is the prices of the bond go through all this set of changes which are not real i mean the real change is from the initial price to the final price this is just an artifact of us changing each Quote, one quote at the time so that uh, the curve is recalculated with just with some of the of the quotes changed at, at until we get to the to the last one now this is obviously not good not only because we recalculate a lot of times uselessly but uh, also imagine if you had some kind of trigger set at this price level this would have been uh, triggered but uh, not for a real bond price on this level but just by by the curve uh, updating in uh, mm, not atomically but not in just in one in one big change but changing one quarter at a time well the conclusion seems to me that it's it's a uh, we don't want this uh, so what's is what are the possible alternatives well one is uh, if you really have to do this uh, it's possible uh, the, the library gives you means to, to freeze the bond while to do the calculation so if i call bond freeze for instance well this is not just for bonds this is for all the z objects now i've freeze the bond now if i change the quotes uh, nothing happens because i stopped notifications from happen from from i'm have stopped the bond from recalculating notifications get to the bond but they didn't have any effect and now as i unfreeze the bond which well that's probably a, a better term for 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 this well this should should probably should probably be something like this but well never mind when the bond is, is released, we have one single notification to the observer with the final price. So uh, this might be an alternative if you have to, to, to do like, like uh, have to set some kind of observer in place like this one. Also in C++, not in Python. 
it's possible to disable temporarily disable notifications globally and re-enable it at the at the end. But uh, well, this is just really uh, some some um, workaround that we have to put in place just because uh, we set this kind of observer. So some kind of observer observable that that that. Uh, uh, recalculates as soon as uh, recalculates automatically. What we should do instead is uh, preferably is uh, something like uh, the, the the instrument does when it, it receives a notification. It doesn't just it doesn't recalculate. Instead, it just uh, sets some kind of dirty flag to to to, to signify that uh, next time that we ask for the price, we should recalculate. We should do something like this. Uh, we could do something like this, so let's delete the, the, the original observer so we don't trigger that any longer. We're just going to, to use another observer. This, this time we're not going to ask the bond for, it, for its price. We're just going to set some kind of this, this flag, the status of this flag to down initially and then the function which is called Upon notification is going to set the status to up, and uh, again we're going to register with the bond. So the initial state is down. Now, if we set the quotes back to 100, this should notify this the bond and uh, therefore this observer. And in fact, uh, if we print the flag again, it is now up, and uh, since this tells us that the, the price has changed, changed. We can ask the bond for, for its price and we get the new one. So we skip directly to the, to the last price without recalculating in between. Better yet, you don't need this kind of machinery to do that. If you just uh, want to manage uh, the, the, the change in your quotes yourself, you can just uh, do away with observers altogether because this kind of work is already done by the, by the bond. So what you do is just uh, you set your quotes, all of them, you don't do anything while you set the quotes. In the, at the end you can ask the bond for its MPV and you're going to get the, the updated value. Also, if you're not sure what quotes you're changing, what instruments are affected by that, this also takes care of that because in case this quote is referred to another curve, another bond, whatever, in case this bond was not affected by, by this um, changes, change, this quote changes, uh, calling MPV would, uh, would not recalculate, would just return the, the last updated price and uh, well the, the machinery for that is already in the bond and uh, you don't need to, to manage it yourself. Well, I guess this is all for this screenshot, this screencast. Thank you again for listening and bye. See you next time.